a lot of times where we struggle as women is a man wants us to come under him, but uh, he doesn't have anything for us to submit to. Oh, oh. When, that, when, he ha- when man has vision and he has purpose, mm-hmm. then he has something for the woman to submit under. Okay. Mm-hmm. A lot of times the man hasn't developed and figured out what his purpose is in life. Uh. So she has nothing to submit to. And then when he discovered it, she's like, whoa, whoa, that's not what I agreed to. That's not what I signed up for. Whoa. Yo, what's going on, fam? It's your boy, Anthony O'Neill, and today you are at the table with your boy, but I have some special guests with me today. Uh, We have my good friends, Keisha and Marvin Richardson. They are the founders of The Road to Becoming One. (laughs) One, not two. I'm talking about Uno. Is that right? Is Uno right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there we go. And here is where they add value to pursuit of successful re- successful relationships um, and oneness when it comes to marriage. And what I love about this couple, you guys, is they specialize really in people who've been divorced and who are single again, and they're ready to get back into the relationship world. Uh, and so I'm excited to have them at the table. And then, y'all, there's no secret to who this woman is uh, sitting next to me for those of you all who are watching this on YouTube, uh, but for podcasts, that's my sister. She's become a dear friend of mine. It's just sent wa- Wamala. Hey. Did I say it right? Wamala, yeah. Yes, it's I said it right. <laughs> um, she is um, a character herself. Uh, if you listen to her podcast, if you watched our YouTube show in the past, she's going to have you rolling. Uh, but most importantly, she is a licensed marriage and family therapist uh, born in Uganda. Yes. Uh, but raised in Las Vegas. She paid off over $90,000 in student loan and credit card debt before her 30th birthday. Um, and recently, my sister is recently married. Woo, I'm married. It's yeah, exciting. It's, it's, it's like great. This is going to be a great conversation. Great conversation. <laughs> great conversation. Great conversation. Great conversation. Great conversation. So, you guys, we have 28 minutes on this this show. So, we're going to dive straight into it. All right? So, Let's Keisha uh, and Marvin, uh, you all talk about marriage and oneness. And so, I have a lot of young people who are watching this show. When they hear the word oneness, they're like, okay, wait. What do you mean by oneness? Like... Are we literally one? Do I have to do everything he says or what she says? Like, define what does the word oneness mean to you all? Okay. I'll start? Yes. All right. So, for those that know the Bible, it says, For this purpose, a man shall leave his mother and father and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Okay. Easier said than done, because yes, you're one. You're supposed to be one, but you're two people. Two different yeah, dynamics, yeah, yeah. two different thought processes. So you actually have to start the process of becoming one. Mm-hmm. You're just not one automatically. Yeah. Um, and so oneness is deciding to be intentional about being a team. Yeah. So yeah. we're a team Richardson, not team Marvin, team Keisha. It's yeah. team Richardson. Yeah. So that's the process of starting it. A, a part of me still thinks that you all are one in flesh because, brother, like you are so close to your wife right now. <laughs> I'm like, can you breathe? <laughs> you know, uh, but those of you all watching on YouTube, listen, y'all, they were like on the opposite sides of the table. And my man was like, yo, uh, baby, I'm getting closer. Let me get closer because we are one. <laughs> uh, but I love the energy there. Do people fight back when it comes to that, you know, like one, the process of how to come from me separate, her separate to now becoming one when it comes to that relationship? Um, I think people do, you know, fight that battle. It's just like anything else. And especially when, you know, with us being married again. Okay. So when you look at, most people think about blended families. We're blending. They're separate families, separate fathers, separate mothers, and we're trying to blend that. But in a second marriage, it's a blending of finances. There's a blending of households. You actually became single and you found your identity again. Yeah. And now here you are trying to figure out how do I share who I become now as an individual with someone else. So yeah. it kind of gets kind of tricky in that. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I need my independence. Single woman, independent. I don't need a man. Yeah. That's just kind of the way the, the culture has made us believe. But when we look at it from a biblical standpoint, if we actually come under our husband and he has— Oh, wait, 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 wait. What would you say right now? Yeah. Hold on, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah! Whoa, wait, wait, wait. Ho, 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 ho. I'm going to stand up with <laughs> Did you just say <laughs> when we become married and we come under yes. your husband? Mm. I didn't say that. <laughs> I did not say that. Blame the wife. And he didn't just care for it? either. Huh? 
You didn't prep her either. I did not prep you to say that. Did, did no. I prep you to say that? No. no. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Now let, let's, let, let's talk about it. Let's live right now <laughs> okay. for a minute. Doctor, I'm going to need your input on this. <laughs> um, okay, let me calm down. Mm. Okay, let me calm down. <laughs> So you're a woman and you said that. Break that down because I bet you some ladies looking at you like, what the beep, beep did she just say? Well, mm. I think the issue is a lot of times where we struggle as women is a man wants us to come under him, but uh. he doesn't have anything for us to submit to. Oh, oh. Can you do a phone drop, mic drop? <laughs> that, I mean... <laughs> Mm. That's, okay, keep going. Keep going. Ooh, I know. So when there is a <laughs> when, when, he ha, when man has vision and he has purpose, mm-hmm. then he has something for the woman to submit under. Mm-hmm. Okay. A lot of times, men and women are getting married before the appropriate time. Uh, the man hasn't developed and figured out what his purpose is in life, uh, so she has nothing to submit to. And then when he discovers it, she's like, "Whoa, whoa, that's not what I agreed to. That's not what I signed up for." Whoa. So. It has to be order when it comes to relationships and becoming um, so focused on, oh, I just want to be married. I don't want to be alone because yeah. you can get married yeah. and still be mm-hmm. alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just to add to that, you can't follow a parked car. And like, you know, oh you know, gosh. you know, like the same back in the day, oh, we go together. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Where are we going? <gasps> like, gosh. sir, do you okay. know where you're going? Do you know what your trajectory is? Yeah. We can be five years from now. It's and good. so, you know, you have a wife that wants to follow you, mm. and she's supposed to multiply, add, and help oh. you duplicate. Yeah. But if you don't have anything to mm. put in production for her to take, yeah. where are y'all going? You've mm. <laughs> So a lot of things just happened here. Yeah, a lot of things just happened. <laughs> And I'm looking at you and because— I'm taking it all in. Yeah, yeah, taking it all in. You're looking at me, why? I mean, because you just recently got married, mm-hmm. you know, uh, last year. And um, how does this make you feel hearing that? Because you also are married again as well. Mm-hmm. Um, newlywed. What, how does that make you feel? I Everything they're saying, I'm like, more people need to hear this stuff. Um, I, you know, I think that as there's me as a therapist and there's me as a human. Yeah, yeah. And so yes. there's those are kind of two different worlds because I put my therapy hat on and I see things differently. And then yeah. I have emotions yes. as a human and that yeah. can override the logical yeah. part of myself. So what was happening and what I'm seeing is when you go from being individuals to being one, right? As soon as you ask them a question, they look to each other and they're a team Mm -hmm. in figuring out how are we moving. So it's like going from riding a bike by yourself Mm -hmm. to learning how to ride a bike in tandem. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody's been on a tandem bike. I was following one the other day in my car. (laughs) (laughs) And Did it look easy or did it look challenging? It looked very challenging because they were literally in sync. But me, I would be like... (laughs) Just going and, like, trying to hurry up. But I, yes. they was literally, like, at the same pace. And I'm like, see, that, as a single person, that is something that I'm currently working on, on really prepping myself mm. to become one mm-hmm. with someone so, else. That's where people— I don't, wanna, I don't think I want to say fall short. That's where people cut themselves short mm. because they don't use the time where they're single to prepare mm. Absolutely. for the oneness. Mm. There are things that you're supposed to— th- Let me not say supposed to. There are things that you can do while you're single so that when you do become one, it's easier— Absolutely. Now, it's not easy. It's easier. Oh. Okay? <laughs> There's a difference. Yeah, there's a difference yeah. there. But you prepare it's in order to go into that union more whole, with more information, with more knowledge, with more um, of a sense of who you are so you don't get lost within mm-hmm. the relationship. Because what people don't talk about is that there's, with every joyous occasion, there's also a, a certain level of Lost. Yeah, yeah. So what people don't realize and what we don't talk about, which I'm sure is what happens, why people feel so connected to y'all, is because you're talking about things that nobody else wants to talk about. Mm-hmm. The stuff that's kind of deemed like, you know, taboo or Absolutely. no one cares about divorces or you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's like being a washed up yeah. boy yeah. band or something like that. And so you're talking about these things that really matter to a great proportion of society. You know, unfortunately, a lot yes. of people have gone through, yeah. you know, being um, married and then unfortunately having having to to uh, leave that marriage or for it to end mm-hmm. and then figure out, okay, what do I do now? Which direction do I go? And those who spend the time as a single person mm-hmm. preparing mm-hmm. are at a higher rate of success. Yeah. 
whether they get back with, get with somebody or not, they're yeah. at a higher rate of success. Yeah. Yes. Fa- satisfaction yeah. in being fulfilled. But those who don't use their time to prepare while they're single struggle more. That's when you get on the bike and the bike isn't going anywhere. Right. <laughs> or you, you're like, you guys are going forward and back. Like, and and yeah. it's really difficult. So I think that what they said and the idea, now everyone has to decide what how they see relationships and mm-hmm. each other's roles. But people also don't blatantly have those conversations either. Yeah. So we think we're coming together with the same idea. But if we never talked about certain things, mm-hmm. we we make a decision and then we realize later that we weren't ever on the same page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Absolutely. so I think that there are so many conversations that need to be had that people are skipping, <laughs> don't even recognize or realize they should be having. And that's why we have to just talk about this stuff more. It takes energy, though. It's not— it's, uh. What are some of those conversations that should be had, though? I'm glad you answered that. So it's like, you know, when the relationship comes, there's a level of mechanics that you got to be prepared for. Yeah. So when those moments come where you did not expect it, it's like going from basic math to calculus. If you didn't prepare your basic math, uh-huh. when it's a calculus moment in the relationship, <laughs> you said you're still trying mm-hmm. to count one, two, three, and they're like, wait a minute, you need oh, to find yep. X, you need to find Come on, bro. how did we, like, how yeah. did you get here? And mm-hmm. so now you have a person who's used, to, accustomed to pedaling a certain speed, yeah, yeah, and yeah, another yeah. person is still just trying to get their feet on the pedal. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And so... Um, when you're not preparing, then you have those moments, then there's that level of friction. But there's a lot of conversations that need to be had. Yeah. Once you become single again, who am I? When you start mm. to dating again, why do I want to date? Mm. Do I want to get married? If you get in a relationship, well, what does that even look like? Mm. And then when the difficult times come, because they will come, mm. how are you going to handle that? Mm. How are we going to handle that as a couple? Mm. You know, at some point, there needs to be, okay, we're going to go, we're going into a cycle, so now let's pause yeah, yeah, yeah. before we turn this cycle into something major yeah, that we really don't need to do. Who should, in this generation, in this generation, okay, <laughs> uh, I'm going to say in this generation, I'm going to say in these days and times, because I see this in all age brackets. And I think we as men, so correct me, you're the expert here. I'm guessing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the money guy and success guy. I'm not the relationship guy. Uh, but people love coming to me, and they love when I talk about relationship stuff. So let's let's go there. Okay. In today's day and time, I'm seeing more of our women, ladies, being the strong, independent, I don't need a man. I'm going to go build everything on my own. And when I come to the table, I'm coming to the table just as strong as you or even better than you. And a part of me, I don't, I, and I'm going to be real. A part of me as a single person, I don't mind that, but sometimes those ladies make me feel like I'm not the man when I come to the table. Mm. Because it's like, I don't need you. And and I feel as if I do need my wife. Now, I don't need my girlfriend, but I do need my wife, and my wife shouldn't need her husband. Mm. Yes. Where am I? What, what's going on? Because, like, what, am, I, am I wrong to say that I think— and I think the part that comes from because men, and I'm gonna go deep here. Correct me if I'm wrong, bro. All right, okay. I'm, I'm counting on you, bro. I'm counting on you. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's Marvin, brewing. It is Marvin, brewing. Tell me you're wrong, okay? And as a matter of fact, if you're <laughs> listening to this and if you're watching this on YouTube, comment below. Let me know if I'm wrong, because I think I'm going deep here. I'm gonna go deep. <laughs> going deep. I'm gonna go deep. I'm gonna put my goggles on. When it comes to the minority culture, I mm. think men we have failed our sisters. We have not stepped up to the plate. We have not been a provider. We have not been a protector. And when I say protector, I'm talking about protector of her emotions, a protector of the family. Mm. And so it's like ladies have had to step up. We've, mm. And it's not just black people, not just minorities, but even men. Sometimes when, if you have intimacy before marriage, who's normally raising up the child? The, the woman. woman. Yes. So the woman's having to work, provide, protect, and do all that while men are out here just having a good time. So I'm like, a part of that is on us, but then, like, a part of it's not on us. So speak into that, like, (laughs) why you laughing? (laughs) Like, what's, who's wrong, who's right? Like, what, what's going on? Here we go. Oh, Lord. Here we go. Um, (laughs) You touched on so much, so I'm going to try to get them all. Um. First, I would say we're equal in value, but we're different in function. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Equal in value, but different, different in, in function. function. Okay, I got and you. And so to kind of combat the thought of when our sisters look at us from a state, a place of, 
I make more than you, I've done more than you, I've accomplished more than you. We're equal in value, different in function. Mm -hmm. And so, whereas you may be able to capture certain things a lot faster, mm -hmm. I'm able to take that, I'm able to do what I do differently from what you do. Mm -hmm. So you don't, have, you don't have to compare mm -hmm. how you do it from how I do it because Women, they have about 15 to 20,000 words. Men, we have about 2,000. So the way that we— Say that again, the bro. Way that we, <laughs> no, they talk in paragraphs. We talk in sentences. Right. It's like, what do you want to eat? <laughs> right. Chicken. That's it. Babe, <laughs> 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 what do you want to eat? I don't know. Oh, I'm thinking about this. I'm thinking about yeah. that. You go around the whole rabbit hole before you finally get to— get. I want to go here because you said, let's go here. No, let's go Come here. On. No, let's go here. No, Come no. on. So by the time Come you on. get to restaurant See number 10— See up on us? <laughs> Okay. It's okay. Um, We're going to talk in a second. <laughs> that's fine. I'm going to let you talk. I'm definitely let you talk. But, yes, as brothers or as men, we have failed. And I can go into the whole cultural aspect, slavery aspect, yeah, yeah, yeah. the implications of that. Yes, I get that, but this is 2021. On. Yes. Um, and to some extent, we are without excuse. Come on. Mm -hmm. And so come we on. can't use the way that we've come up as the benchmark of how we conduct ourselves in our present. Yes. Just because my uncle did this or because of the men around me did certain things, I'm supposed to follow that right. uh, That path that right. they've created. No, you're supposed to create your own path. You're supposed to become who you're supposed to become. And then, to get pre not to get preachy, but the Bible says to love your wife as Christ loved the church. Come on. So th if there's a level of dying that you're not willing to do, Come on, bro. you don't deserve her. Come on, bro. Because we are called to die. Yeah, yeah. Like, and so, mm -hmm. yes, this is where we have fallen. This is where we have missed it. And then some of it is because we haven't been taught. Right. And that's right. not a scapegoat, but we haven't been taught. Like, who is teaching men mm. how to be husbands? Mm -hmm. right. Who's teaching men how to be leaders? Let me tell you who's teaching them. Our mothers. Because, mm. mm. so here's another statement. No shade to the ladies, but mothers have to be careful that they don't raise their daughters and love their sons. <laughs> he said a whole mouthful. That's mouth. a whole word. That's a whole word. <laughs> because, yes, you know... You know, oh. Ray Ray, Michael, Jay, whatever his name is, you know, love him. That's my baby. That's my baby. You let him play PlayStation all day long. Right. With your daughter, do your homework, get a job, make sure you don't have to depend on a man for A, B, C, D, and E. So then they grow up with this programming. So by the time the man comes, I don't need you. My thing is, I don't want you to need me. Mm -hmm. I need you to want me. Ooh. If you want me, I will give you the world. Mm -hmm. But if it goes into this yep. need-based relationship, I don't need you. I just make I mean, it, it's basically emasculating a man before his very eyes. So, before we let your wife and just sit <laughs> talk, mm. give me what are the top three functions men play or men should play? So if you're single, what are the three things you need to be working on as a single man? And then I'm going to come to y'all ladies. When y'all come try, try and come for us, um, <laughs> I'm going to ask y'all after y'all try uh, to give us three things. But what are three things that men should be doing, period? I'll give you three Ps. Yeah. Participate, provide, and protect. That was quick. Ooh. Participate. <laughs> Participate. Participate, you have to be emotionally present. Yeah. You gotta be mentally present. Yeah. You gotta be self-aware. Yeah. And you have to have you have to be able to have a landscape of what's going on in your world and in her world. Yeah, 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 yeah. The only way you do that is you participate. How yeah. you doing? Yeah, yeah. You know, how you feel emotionally. Ooh. I ask my sons this, how's your heart? Mm -hmm. Because I need to know if I know mm -hmm. that something is not something is off with your heart, then I know how to ad address that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Provide. We need a job. If yes. a man don't work, a man don't eat. Yes, come on, man. Come on. It doesn't get any clearer than that. Right, right. Um, and protect. Yeah. You got to be willing to die for her. Yeah. And not just die like, okay, I'm going to jump in front, in front of a bridge, right. but die to your flaws. Die to your you pride. wanting your way. Die to, but I think it's, it's supposed to be like this. Right. But your wife, oftentimes in, in the Bible, in the Proverbs, they always refer to the feminine as wisdom. Man. She will. She will. You know, <clears throat> so yeah. I'm a single man, and so I'm, I'm waiting until <laughs> I get married to do it the right way. But I was reading this book called For, Women, for Men Only, mm. and in there they said something similar to you and said, men, if you are looking for intimacy in your marriage, when you participate, 
that is a quicker way to getting there because now you're making her feel like she's involved and she cares and it will open up more. So mm -hmm. like what you just dropped was that was some good nuggets for the married people. If if things are going wrong, <laughs> participate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ladies, ladies, I mean y'all making faces over there. You Don't know what what's 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 on your mind? Who who's gonna talk first? Cause y'all looking at each other like, wait, where do we go? How do we do this? What wait was so Go ahead. Um, so I'll go back to where you talked about, you know, what Marvin mentioned about the whole how we are raising our daughters one way and our yeah. boys another way. Yeah, yeah. Because boy is supposed to be the head of the household. Me is supposed to be the head of the household. Oh, Lord. She Oftentimes, and I have again. a son. And, my, you know, <laughs> one of the complaints, even my daughter's like, well, I feel like he get away with a lot more than I do. Ooh. Because we're teaching our daughters to cook to clean. We're mm. teaching them all how to go be a good go-getters. Make sure you get an education. Make sure you don't have to depend on anyone. But our sons, mm -hmm. it's like we're wanting to protect them from everything yeah. instead of teaching them the same skill sets uh. that we should be, that we're, we're so hard on our daughters. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if that's more of a generational cultural type thing yeah. that we want our gir girls to be strong. Yeah. And a lot of times it comes from single mother households or the women in the households feel like they had to do everything and they yeah. didn't have the support of the man. So we we're engraving these things into our daughters. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But it should be changed around because then when a man come in a relationship, like, well, what does she need me for? Right, right, you right. You know, but we do need the man. We have to realize that as women, we are helpers. We are helpmates. We are to help him birth what God mm -hmm. has already put inside of him. Mm -hmm. ba, 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 ba. <laughs> and not to take away from his role. Um, and we have to also recognize our strengths. Mm. I, I may be stronger in the financial aspect. That doesn't mean mm -hmm. that I run the finances of my home. Ooh. We have to still come into an agreement Ooh. to that, but recognize that I have a strength there. Mm. And so I think we begin to want to dominate um, in our different areas and not realize, okay, this person is on the same team. Come on. And so in our single season, we have to really um, embrace that season. We yeah. look at, it, oh, it's a single season, but seasons change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The problem is we don't know how long that season's going to last, <sighs> so we try to rush the season. Come on. Come on. Like, well, I don't want to be in this season. Why? What have you done in this season that's going to prepare you for the next season that you're trying to go into? Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Just sent. Mm. Wow. She said men mm -hmm. are the head of the house. Do you agree with that? I do agree. For real? <laughs> Y'all was ready for, for us to do a death by a thousand cuts, but I uh, I agree mm -hmm. with everything that was said, personally. I just didn't think and you would agree with that because you are, you are a strong-minded woman. But you can be both. I mm -hmm. think what happens is that... I don't know if it's societal or yeah. cultural yeah. kind of norms, whatnot, yeah. that, you know, we assume that strong and independent can't also be submissive. Ooh. Because Ooh. in the world, who hunts among lions? Come on, girl! Come on, girl! <laughs> Listen. Come on! The lioness. Yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> so the lioness goes out and hunts, and then she comes back. But, so to me, it looks, it, I guess, would look one way in, in my situation, right? Where I come across or people see me mm -hmm. as a strong, independent yeah, woman, yeah. Yeah. which I am and capable of doing, which I think personally, as a woman, ha was helpful for me to feel whole individually mm. so that when I go into a relationship, mm. I don't have to attach my sense of self to another other person mm. and but when I do in my relationship I submit to my partner like mm. I yeah. he's the, he's the one leading the household even if if in a situation where let's say a woman makes more than a man to me the man can still cover all of the household whatever whatever and the woman's what I still think I think that there's nothing wrong with coming up under a man mm -hmm. however a woman is not going to want to support or come up under somebody who's not taking her anywhere which was already mentioned yeah. and so it doesn't what wasn't said was that the guy has to be a millionaire or they have to be super accomplished yeah. or they have to have this this and that it's just that they need to have vision and purpose and be making progress toward that vision and purpose for a woman to say, okay, I'll sign on. Because women give themselves completely. Unfortunately, so many women give themselves mm -hmm. to people who... Hmm. Uh-oh. 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 I'm trying to think how to say this. So, you know, unfortunately, women will give themselves completely to somebody who hasn't shown them that they're willing to participate, mm. provide, and, and protect. protect. And then, because that situation ends up so messed up, yeah. they have all this healing that they need to do in their single season yes. before they go back into being in a relationship. But people waste time in the single season, and then they start 
getting into relationships that look like a carousel. That's mm. why the person changes, but the relationship or the situation stays the same. Wow. And so that's why I think mm. it's really important to be able to have, you know, a SARA program to get into, to utilize a coach, mentor, counselor, maybe all of them because you might <laughs> yes. need it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's a lot <laughs> yes. of levels. There's generational yeah. trauma. There's, you know, people that experience their own trauma and hurts yeah. and hangups. And so I think that I agree with everything that was said, but mm. I also think it's necessary Necessary that we make note that it has to be collective and community-based that we help people get out of this. So we, what we said was, where are we getting this information from? We Now, America is a rugged individualistic society, which right. there's nothing wrong with. Right, right. But to me, no one gets made by themselves. It took hu two humans and then one divine being. Ooh. So in it takes a village isn't just for children. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it takes a village for relationships to thrive. It takes yeah. a village to support, you know, new mothers. It takes a village to support men. And so as a woman, as a black woman, knowing consciously the the turmoil and the trauma that black men have gone through, to me, it's my job, even if it's a man I don't know, a black man I don't know, or a man of color or whatever, my goal is to support and send love and healing and joy energetically for that person, even if it's not my spouse. Not in a romantic way, right, right, but right, because right. I understand that person's plight, mm. that if I see somebody, I'm going to smile and nod and say hello. I'm going to say, God. how are you doing? Because it's Good our God. responsibility yes. collectively to support each other. So y'all thought we was coming for you, yeah. but it's our job as yes. women to say, you know what? Good job taking time to reflect and heal and grow as a black man, trying to be a good black husband to <laughs> yes. whoever, whoever comes to, you know, whoever comes to you, right? Let yes. that be blessed. I receive it. See and the thing me. about it is, you have to realize, <laughs> <laughs> with black women, or even just women in, in, in general, yeah. is that we are brought up to be strong, independent. That doesn't yeah. mean we want to be. Oh, we yeah, Most yeah. of the times, we don't have a choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we come off as this strong, independent, I don't need a man. It's yeah. because I don't have any other options. Yeah. But I don't really want to have to be in this role all the time. I yeah. want a man who can support me and help me to drive me to, to live out my visions as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. But my job is in the marriage is to help him build his vision mm -hmm. and birth his vision and come alongside of him. So I think the stigma is, oh, women just want to be independent. They don't need me and all these different things. And the reality is, we don't really want to have to be that strong, independent woman yeah. all the time. I think essentially, right, again, coming up under a man, yeah, wonderful. Mm -hmm. I think it's necessary. You have to give a woman a reason to want to come up under you yeah. and to take her hat off. Because some women don't want to be strong, independent, but some do enjoy it. Mm. I enjoy mm -hmm. the grind. I enjoy the hustle. I mm. enjoy mm. being able to dominate in my work. But that doesn't mean I want to do that all the time. I don't want to go home and mm. have to do that in the household yeah. as well. So I think a man that can help a woman or show a woman that she has reason to be able to take her hat off and still feel secure, because that's what women like and need, yeah. is stability and security, um, mm -hmm. then she, in the right context, will give her all will be able to yes. die for the man as well. So there's a cuss word in the relationship world. <laughs> oh, boy. That, uh, why you say, oh, boy? <laughs> 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 there, 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 there is a word that every time I bring it up, um, I get a lot of negative feedback. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with that. Because uh, for me and my brand, I really want to help people be successful when it comes to their money mm -hmm. and when it comes to their uh, life in general. And a part of their life and money is in relationships. And in relationships, I believe there has to be submission. Absolutely. And But I think a lot of people, when they hear me say, I think, wives, submitting to your husband is important. But I also believe that men submitting back to your wives as well is important. So let's talk about that for a little bit. And then don't get it twisted. I'm going to come back to you all about this whole, what are the three functions a woman should play? Um, just so I want to give them some practical things that mm -hmm. single people can start practicing and working on now. But ladies, and we've already identified, you two are different. All right. So, uh, <laughs> But I want you all to think from the viewer and the listener right now. Why does the word submission come off wrong? And how should we, all of us, Look at that word better. I think oftentimes we look at the word submission, we think control. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because a lot of times you have some men mm -hmm. who use it as a control mechanism. True. And so if we recognize what the word submission means, mm -hmm. you know, 
as I meant, previously stated, was when you're thinking about submission, I have to have something to submit under. Yeah, yeah. If you don't have a vision or a purpose, what am I submitting to? Yeah. So we look at the word submission, like, oh, I can control you and you're going to do this and you're going to do that because that's what I said. Don't ask me any questions. Mm -hmm. But I don't really think that's what submission is all about. Mm -hmm. It's all about submitting to the vision and the purpose of the man, not submit, submitting to the control of the of man. The man. Yeah, so yeah. the man doesn't want to swallow, swallow his pride and mm -hmm. kill his flesh in that process and in that journey of understanding what submission truly means. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Yeah, the word's been weaponized, essentially. Yeah. And it's been weaponized to be used against people. Mm -hmm. And I think when... Every relationship is different. So when two people can come to the table and have a conversation about how they want this specific relationship to look, mm -hmm. then there can be clarity and understanding <laughs> what that means between those two people. Mm -hmm. So we can't sign on to being in a relationship and it look like Cindy and John's <laughs> or sign on to be in a relationship and it looks like Bob and, you know, Sarah. Mm -hmm. We need to sign on to a relationship that we have designed with God in mind mm -hmm. for us. Mm. And what happens is people just try to come up together and put a relationship together from, yeah. unfortunately, the scraps or the pieces that they see mm -hmm. on TV or <laughs> from what Instagram. they— On right. Instagram. Right. Or, right. you know, unfortunately, not a lot of people have good representations mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. what a successful relationship looks like. Yeah. And I think that in order to be successful in a couple, I personally think that people, couples should have couple mentors. Wow. Come or on. couple coaches. I agree. I right? agree. So no successful person, whether it's in business or personally or whatever, doesn't have support, yeah. doesn't yes. have a roadmap or a blueprint to help them get to that place. And so what I think is necessary, because to me, collectivistic, right? I'm from Africa, so I always think community yeah. um, is mm -hmm. that we need to have more conversations yeah, 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 yes. yeah. with people that are in different yes. levels. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We need the older generation to let us know, you know, things that they've learned so that we can listen. What mm -hmm. people don't want to do is listen because <laughs> people's egos are in the way. Their yeah. pain is in the way. Um, we need to listen and figure out how we can apply that to our situation. Again, we're not listening to do exactly what they did, but to see what nuggets are for me and what do I need to pack away for when things get complex and we're not yes. doing basic algebra anymore. Yeah. Now we're on trigonometry, okay? <laughs> right, right, right. And so I think that having the community of other couples, having singles, having people that are mm -hmm. single again, to be able to come together and have these really honest, vulnerable conversations yeah. could be the key to change things. So I think submissive has just been weaponized and there haven't been enough conversations to help people understand that they have a misconception of the concept. Have we weaponized that word submissive as men? Yes. I mean, you know, our cultural reasoning has taught us, you know, you're the head, you're the lead. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately, um, it's been used even with, you know, leaders of church. Mm -hmm. where they, Anytime that scripture comes out, wives, submit to your husbands. Um, so you start to hear the you know, crossing mm -hmm. has been weaponized as mm -hmm. a means of I want to control you. If I can control your thinking, I can control what you're doing. Yes. And so if particular age generation feels like, well, a woman's role is to be in the house and in the kitchen, yeah. that's a viewpoint yeah. that's so antiquated and needs right. to be thrown out. How do we get to being a team moving in a direction if you're feeling like your person who's on your team is supposed to be um, behind you right. or they're just some servant. Right. Like, no, no, no. We're, both, we're supposed to both be coming to this thing equally serving. Yeah. So if she can see me submit, mm. then it'll be easier mm. for her to submit. Because mm. mm -hmm. I have bosses mm -hmm. that I submit to. Mm -hmm. So like for men, we can't <laughs> weaponize it towards our women. But then Come when on. you go to your boss and he says, I need you to do A, B, C, D, and E. Yes, yes sir. Because we know you're capable of it. Ooh. So you're choosing not to do it in relationship, Ooh. but you yeah. but you're doing it elsewhere. elsewhere. And that's problematic for a woman. I think Absolutely. for me, t take away from the boss. Um, um, let's, see, let's go even higher than that. If I can't submit to God, hmm. mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Then my wife shouldn't be following me. But if my wife sees me submitting to God, but she can't, you know, he can't and I can't love her in that way, not as in like God, but love her in a way and she's a partner, then we have a problem there as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I, I totally, totally, totally get you all. Now, ladies, I ain't off the chain. <laughs> <laughs> what are the three functions that... And I know there's a lot more, but when you think of what are the top three functions that women should be, our ladies should be working on now. Let me go first. 
Yes. <laughs> uh, okay, just say it. Okay, it. the first things that come to mind, I think, are stabilize. Oh. So okay. I feel like, and I don't know if this is just cultural, mm-hmm. but I feel like men go through a lot. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of expectation placed on men. Yeah, yeah. And I think a woman's function or role a lot of the time is to create stability uh, for a man to be able to rest, for them mm. to be able to create, mm. for them to be able to um, reflect mm. and connect back to God and stay focused. So I think we're, we're stabilizers. Mm. We're, we ground we ground men, mm. I think. And yes. so men oftentimes will be living their lives, you know, whatever that looks like or means for them. And then when a, when a man finds the right woman mm-hmm. and joins his life with her, there's some level of peace he experiences because he's stable, mm. because he's grounded. So I think sta- stability is the first one. I think mm-hmm. support is another one. Mm-hmm. So supporting him, you know, not blindly, but when he has a vision and purpose, like it was mm-hmm. mentioned, then you support his vision and purpose. Now, you might poke holes, which is different than criticizing and mm-hmm. condemning. That's so good. he might tell you he has a business idea, and you're like, great. You know, I love it. Have you considered this part? What about mm-hmm. this? Tell me more, mm-hmm. which is supportive and not condemning. Yeah, so yeah. when he brings something up and you just shoot it down, okay? Yeah. <laughs> like a duck out of the sky, sis. You, yeah. the, you don't want to emasculate a man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There shouldn't be any, you shouldn't want to be with an emasculated man. Yeah, that yeah, doesn't yeah. make sense. Yes. It doesn't go together. And so we have to support when we know that there's a vision and purpose in place. Wow. And then we keep them on their P's and Q's. Okay. <laughs> so we we poke holes where we see fit so that when they go back into the world, they have the, yep. the best yep. possible yes. yep. outcome laid out for them because you supported yeah. that vision and purpose. The last thing that comes to mind is sustain. We have to sus- we have to be sustainable you for them. Three, hey, and three we P's, have to right. yep. she right. had three S's. Look. This. Thanks for giving me some time to come up with that. Um, <laughs> Um, you have to be, you have to sustain that energy. Yeah. It has to be, because relationships is long, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Life is short, but life is long. Right, right. So how are you going to make this sustainable mm-hmm. where your relationship can continue to evolve and grow over time mm-hmm. for you to be able to thrive in the long run? So to me, stabilize, support, and sustain are the three that, that come to mind. Keisha, you want to add anything to that? Well, for me, I have the three Fs. Three Fs? Whoa. Y'all ain't even mercy. know. We got six. Okay. Okay. Six, man. Oh, she gave me a high five. Okay, there we go. Okay, okay, okay. So, okay. What's the Fs? Um, Bring it on, First baby. and foremost, it's faith. Faith, mm. okay. That's right. the foundation. Yes. I think we're in a culture that we try to have a marriage without God in the middle, and mm. God created marriage. You cannot have a successful marriage without God being in the middle of that. Okay. A woman has to be able to cover her husband. <sighs> So if she don't have a faith foundation, she can't cover him where he's going. Mm. So when I see him struggling in his day-to-day, I mm. can go to God and have prayer for him and cover him to make sure that God gives him the strength that he needs to progress on in his day-to-day activities. Mm-hmm. Come on, come on. Um, then you have finances. Finances. I got to have my finances in order so that I don't become a burden come on, when I come into a marriage. Yeah. Um, we want to take that out. We live in a society. Yes. That- <laughs> Yeah. Ah, yeah. <laughs> I wish I had the hammer right there. <laughs> yes, yes, we have this uh, microwave generation. Yes. I want it now. I don't want to wait on yes. it. Mm-hmm. And we look at the big B word budget yeah. Yeah. as this big like, oh no, not doing that. Yes. But if we have our finances in order, mm-hmm. we'll actually have more ability not to lead down the road that may lead to divorce. Yeah, because we know money. Mm is one of the top reasons for divorce. Yes. So yes, if you get yes. that together in your single season, you have the ability to be more successful and not bring on an additional stressor in your marriage when you begin to have problems. It's like, oh, finances, I'm out of here. I can't take this. So that would be my second one. Okay. And then the last one would be fitness for me. Fitness? Hey. Oh, you know, <laughs> fitness. Fitness? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, fit, fit, fitness as in like working out? Yes. As in like, like, like looking good? <laughs> well... <laughs> Because men are visual. <laughs> yes, we are. Say that, that sis. So we oftentimes... <laughs> You've been talking like, today. <laughs> I just want you to know you've been talking today. <laughs> we can't be upset mm-hmm. if we get in a relationship and we're looking one way. And then we change. And then our significant other eyes get the wondering. <laughs> well, we know what he was attracted to. Woo! 
Bam. So it's our responsibility to maintain that, but if we have the discipline in our single season of open? fitness. Did you open this already? <laughs> yeah. I did. <laughs> oh. A whole word. That's my wife. And the other side of that, when I say fitness, is because we think about it. What does God allow inside a marriage Mm. that he doesn't allow outside a marriage without it being a sin? That's Mm. sex. So God didn't say we couldn't have sex. He said you can only have sex within marriage so that it's not a sin. So we're not physically able to perform. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Then we're already going in and she setting ourselves up. Oh. <laughs> she said it. Oh my God. Oh, uh, and then the last part of that is the whole we want to expand, we want a family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if I'm not physically fit oh, and I were to get pregnant, mm. now I got challenges because now I'm having postpartum depression because my body's not the way it used to be because I didn't have a discipline to train myself in the area of fitness. Oh my God. So for me, in that single season, if you focus on those three things, you're setting yourself up because faith is the foundation. Fitness, which is your, it would lead to the sex intimacy part of the yes. relationship. And then the finances leads to the marriage. So we know sex and money are the top reasons for divorce. Yes. Hmm. So if you don't focus on those, you're already going in, setting yourself up for the potential of failure. Uh, this is exactly why Marvin and Keisha are the founders. <laughs> Of the road to becoming one. <laughs> Can I add uh, an F? Are you going to add another F? I want to add an F. <laughs> so, fine. Oh, oh, fine. Fine. Oh, fine. Oh, fine. Lord Jesus. <laughs> now, let's, 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 let's. I'm, I'm going to ask one more question. Ask one more question. And I'll let you all go. I think we're already over the time. And I want my producer, Connor, to like, hey, yo. We got to go. But it's just some good conversation right here. So we can go over a little bit more because I know our tribe, I know you all listening and watching right now, you all like, yo, I love it. Keep going. Uh, When ladies hear the word fitness Mm -hmm. in a relationship, how do men bring that up in a respectful way? So so it's like you're saying like, hey, fitness is important. Mm -hmm. Men are physical creatures. We do want our significant other, our spouses, uh, to be beautiful and gorgeous. Mm-hmm. But sometimes men, we can see our ladies starting to slip the same way ladies see us men mm-hmm. starting to slip. Um, how do men who are listening right now, who have a wife, what's the best way and the proper way to bring up, hey, we need to make some changes in the fitness area. Lead by example. Ooh. So, just huh. a nugget for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I noticed in quarantine okay, okay. <laughs> that I began to pick up weight. And, of course, I'm, you know, beginning to approach that next decade of life. And okay. as women like to say, you know, that's when you're, you know, <laughs> things start to kind of shift and weight don't, you know, don't ain't flow. So, I picked up a keto lifestyle. Okay. Okay. I didn't force my husband. Okay. I led by an example. Wow. And after about three, four months, he began to see my results. And he's right. like, I think I'm going to try that thing that you're doing. I got you. So I never down him for bringing to bed, you know, ice cream that I couldn't eat. Right, right, right. But because he saw the results. And so oftentimes we want to point out someone else's flaws, that yeah. mirror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And not see it within ourselves. So yeah. when there is something within us that we begin to deal on us first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our spouses or our significant other will follow if we're being the leader in that aspect without condemning them for it. Yeah, I'll add to that. Um, for men, you need to establish from the beginning that you are for her whether she swells or shrinks. Mm-hmm. If okay. she knows that, because yeah. women will have children. They are yeah. going to swell. Yeah. They're going to shrink. If she mm-hmm. knows, it doesn't matter what your size is, I'm here for you. Yeah. You're always going to be beautiful. And you don't ever want to say you look fat. You got to find ways back to what Keisha was saying, lead by example. So I naturally will run, I'll work out, I'll, Mm. you know, Mm. I'll work out. That's just kind of my thing. Right. Um, But seeing the results of what she was doing, I was like, okay, I'll give it a try. Yeah. Because I don't have a problem following her lead in a different area. We're both going in the same direction. Yeah. She just has a different approach. And now I've decided, oh, I'm going to take part of that approach for myself and have dropped like three pant sizes as a result. Wow. Um, 
But, you know, it's it's very, mm-hmm. you, you got to be sensitive to your wife. You got to know the kind of wife your wife is, or the woman that you're dating, mm-hmm. how she communicates, because everybody can't hear a direct, you need to do this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It could just be, hey, babe, let's go for a walk. Mm-hmm. Or, hey, let's, you know, let's try to try this new, you know, dinner. Or let's try something different. Mm-hmm. Um, so they can kind of lead her and guide her. And then if she starts to swell, she starts to shrink, applaud her. Like, yes, girl. Girl. <laughs> My goodness, girl, you look, I'm going to chase you all around the house. You know, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to find ways to positively reinforce the change that you want to see. Right. But only chase her if you're married. Exactly. <laughs> around the house. So Thank I want to add real quick, because you said participate, and this is an opportunity to participate, mm-hmm. if you recognize. Because oftentimes, it, I think it's also beyond the swelling and the shrinking, because bodies just change sometimes, mm-hmm. and sometimes yeah. they swell and they stay that way. Yeah, yeah. And it's less about, um, it may be more about how someone feels. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And their fitness. Fitness is about more than just weight. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. about strength. It's about flexibility. Yeah, it's absolutely. about agility. Yeah. And so even if it's taking um, time to participate by asking, how's your heart, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because oftentimes those things are connected. Your fitness is connected to your feelings. Yes. And so if this person, like, how are they doing? What's going on emotionally might be, when we address that, might be the road to them being able to invest in themselves, in their fitness, because we've participated in -hmm. in trying to get on the same page or at least seeking to understand what's going on beneath the surface. Because Mm -hmm. the symptom is Mm. what happens to the body. Mm. But there's something below that that is the cause. Mm. And so I think participating um, can be a really great way to, to address that too. This show is epic. We can go on for like another hour. <laughs> let's just let's just be honest here. We we yes. can go on for another hour this about awesome. this uh, because I believe who you connect yourself with plays a huge role in how you become successful in the future. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Um, it plays a huge role in how you are successful with your finances. Mm-hmm. And so I love talking about relationships uh, because I I just believe that's just one of the key ingredients to having a successful life. Absolutely. So. I want y'all to think about that single, whether they're single again or single, never been married. Um, they're watching the show saying it's a lot of great stuff, but some of them are feeling discouraged. Some of them are like, man, this year has been hard. Uh, this past year was hard. And like, what what are some things, or not just some things, say one thing. What is one thing they should be doing right now to prepare for the next step, which is marriage? Marriage again or marriage? What is that one thing? Just one thing, if you only could just leave them with that, what is that one thing? Yeah, I would say that you want to maximize the season you're in. Mm. And that is going to look different for everybody because some people might need to focus more on their finance. Some people might need to focus more on their fitness. So maximizing your season, your single season, looks like trusting that God has already written things for your life. Wow. So you don't need to worry and spend time trying to write Mm -hmm. when your man is going to come and how tall and short he's going to be. And No, God has written whatever it is that is supposed to be for you is already done. Good. So he said for you to focus on putting one foot in front of the other, whatever that looks like in your life. So you need to find solitude in knowing that your life is written for you and better than you could ever write it. And that your job is to maximize the season that you're in to prepare for what God has written for you. There you go. I would say take the time restraints off of God. Mm. Hmm. Mm. Your timing is not his timing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Embrace where you are and enjoy and live your life. That's so good. Oftentimes, like we hear the statement, you know, keeping up with the Joneses. Yeah, yeah. We're looking at Bob and Sarah yeah, relationship yeah. and like, oh, I want that. But we don't go home with Bob and Sarah. Ooh. We don't see the struggles that they're having. So oftentimes we focus, they say the grass is greener on the other side, but the grass is truly greener where you water it at. Cool. Uh, I mean, how are you going to follow that? That's your wife. (laughs) That's my wife. (laughs) Um, She's my rib. Revelation and beauty. Oh, (laughs) Um, I like that. uh, Pursue. 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 Because, you know, men, we're supposed to be directional. We're supposed to be hunting. You know, and even once you've gotten what you feel is a prize, your wife is not a prize, she's a bride. Yeah. But um, even in that, you still have to pursue, you know, what is next for me, Father? What is next for me, God? <sighs> you know, what do I do? Seek ye first the kingdom and, and his righteousness oh, mm-hmm. and all of these things will be added. That's pursuit. Mm-hmm. If you're not pursuing, then you're stagnant. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? If water stands still, it becomes bad. It's just, it's, water has to be 
moving mm-hmm. for it to be continued to be life giving, mm-hmm. and so pursue. And when you pursue from a relationship perspective, when you pursue uh, the kingdom, that's how you find your great thing. I think oftentimes mm-hmm. men and women we go looking for our great thing, and we deal with the headaches because uh, I've had several of them in the past. <laughs> And I think all of us listening and watching have had some headaches. And God checked me one day. He said, because I said, seek ye first the kingdom as a single. And then also I say, you will find your great thing. Find means if you're following my path for you, I will make sure that that is in there and you will pick her up and pursue her rather than you saying, I'm going to go out to the club. I'm going to go over here to this and I'm going to go find me a woman. No, you didn't find it. You went looking for it. And so when you say pursue, I love that specifically for everyone, but specifically for, for men. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, because that's something in this single season of myself, I've really had to uh, focus on that. Yeah. Uh, because I'll get lonely. And when I'm lonely, I go looking to feel that loneliness. That's where the headaches came from. Yeah. And so that's why I'm taking my time. I'm following my path, my assignment here uh, with my brand, my assignment when it comes to the kingdom. And I just believe that I will find my bride. Yeah, let me just add one other thing. I know we got to go. Pursue, right? Yeah. You can pursue and then you embrace the favor because it says, he that finds a wife finds a good thing and receives favor from favor. the Lord. The mm-hmm. favor precedes the good thing. Ooh. So in your pursuit, your brand, mm. you embracing that, mm. all of the favor that comes with that, mm-hmm. the good thing is on the way. Mm. Mm. It's already written. It's just because when you're in what you're supposed to be doing, God illuminates you. Mm. For any man, when you're doing what you're, God has called you to do, he illuminates you. Yeah, yeah. And it'd be a moment where you're somewhere and you look and you see someone or I'm at a restaurant and I have a moment <laughs> and uh, I freeze like T'Challa from Black Panther, rest in peace. Uh, and, <laughs> and I'm like, that's yeah. oneness. Favorite comes first. That is oneness. Y'all, I, I want to thank you all for thank you, uh, spending thank some you. time with me on... Um, well, not, yeah, on the table, at the table, uh, because I truly believe we helped some people today. And um, I want to thank you all. How can people find out more about you all's podcast? Where can they go um, and do that? So I'll let you all go first. Um, actually, right now, they um, can find us on Instagram and okay. the um, and Facebook at okay. The Road to Becoming One. Okay. Um, we have the same name on both platforms. Makes it pretty easy. And then, of course, we have a um, newly created membership, which is SARA, which is Single Again Relationship Academy. I love it. And they can actually go to saraacademy.co to find that. There you yeah. go. And there's actually an ebook on there that we give out. It's, it's actually dealing with the pursuit of relationships, too. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. I love it. Find Just this. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah. I'm just sent of just sent gems. That's J A C E N T S G E M S on Instagram and the podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. I also have a couple of courses on getting in the right money mindset and building and reclaiming your confidence yeah. because I think it's our birthright. So yeah, I appreciate you for having us. Yo, listen, man. Uh, you guys, if you are saying, "Hey, I didn't really, I didn't catch it," I'm gonna make sure that all their information is in the description. So go check out the description. And I promise you all, you will love their platforms. I fully endorse them. I support them. That's why they're at the table right <laughs> here. Um, man, I was about to say every day because I want y'all here every day. <laughs> but now we can't do that every day. But y'all, <laughs> love you all. Thank you all so much. And we'll see you all in the next show. Peace out.